of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, the Lord, we come. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We gather together to lift up your name, to call on your Savior, to fall on your grace. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We gather together to lift up your name, to call on your Savior, to fall in your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints fall down, as your people sing. We will rise with you, lifted on your wings, and the world will see that our God saves, our God saves, In the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We gather together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to call on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down, as your people sing. We will rise with you lifted on your wings. And the world will see that our God says, our God says, there is hope in your name. Morning cares to sound the Joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down as your people sing. We will rise with you lifted on your wings, and the world will see that. Yes, the world will see that our God saves. 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 Our call to worship this morning from Psalm 104, verse 1. 31 through 35. Praise the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. And may the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praises to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to Him as I rejoice in the Lord. And praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Oh, burning sun with golden beams, oh, silver moon with softer gleam, oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him! Hallelujah! 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 Would you please stand as we sing the next two verses? 
Oh, rushing wind that art so strong. Oh, rushing wind that art so strong. Oh, clouds that sail in heaven along. Oh, praise him, hallelujah. Oh, rising morn in praise rejoice. Oh, lights of evening find a voice. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit, three in one. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. Good morning. Good to see everybody here this morning. Just for announcements, just want Becky Rowe to come up and to give an announcement here this morning. Thank you. Um, for the past several weeks, Lynn Cresswell and I have been getting together on Sunday mornings just to research and visit about <coughs> Israel. And we decided we'd like to share that with anyone who would like to share it with us. I thought we were going to do it right away. Becky Rowe learned that she has a lot more to learn about technology. So in a few weeks, probably November, we wanted to give you a heads up that we will do a PowerPoint about the mountains of Jordan and Israel, the Holy Lands. So we'll give you more announcements about that, but we're going to talk about location, scripture that correlates, current events, maybe the people that were um, involved. So we hope to have you join us. It'll be very casual. Thank you, Becky. There you've heard the invitation. You are invited to join them Sunday morning. I also want you to know that if you would like to go to the grotto, We're still going today. We're going to leave right after church, like about 11 o'clock. So get something to eat, just a little bit something to eat as we drive to West Bend. I know you go through Ruthven and Emmitsburg and through Cylinder. And then you get to West Bend. You know, Iowa's got some very interesting names for towns. You'd like to know kind of like, how did they come up with Cylinder for the name of a town? But I'm sure there's a story that goes along with that. And I found out on the way to church today that Sharon, my wife, has been to the grotto when she was like in the second grade with her family, but she doesn't really remember it. So I go like, hey, today you'll be like, what do you call that? <laughs> There you go. That's what I'm thinking of. Deja vu type of a thing. So if you'd like to come, uh, we're going to meet. We're going to probably meet like in the fireside room by 11 o'clock and we'll, we'll uh, carpool to uh, the grotto in West Bend. I've never been there myself, so I'm looking forward to that. But we plan on leaving like at 11 o'clock. You are welcome, even if you haven't signed up, you can come today. Uh, just want to remind you that tonight at 7 o'clock, right, we're going to have the youth group come here to the church and meet here with Gloria. Gloria is going to find out if Sunday night is a good time to meet, right, yeah. with them. And uh, just on behalf of the church, thank you, Gloria, for just coming to be a part of our <laughs> fellowship and church. She does a great job with the kids on Wednesday night. You know, that was the first time was this past Wednesday, and you've got the touch, you know? She, she had the, some of us older ones do a skit for the kids. Some of the comments of the kids was, they're all old people. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get them to do it. The kids do it, and then us old people will watch them. Do what they do. 
<laughs> but thank you so much uh, for what you do. How many kids do we have this past Wednesday night? Any idea? Uh, we had 15 first grade and 10 joyouts. 15 and 10? Yes. So 25 kids that were here come after school. So that's great. I also want to remind you that on Tuesday at 9.30 in the morning, there is a women's Bible study that's just getting started. They're going to study the life of Elijah. And they will meet in the fireside uh, room as well. And it's open to any ladies that would like to be a part of that at 9.30 on Tuesday. And uh, prayer will be following at, at 11 o'clock. And uh, Thursday, we have a Bible study on 1 John. That's in the fireside. It's from noon till 1. I, I lead that one. And uh, Saturday, men's breakfast at Perkins. I see the women had 18 this last week at the waterfront. Notice they never go to Perkins. What? 20? Okay, we surrender. <laughs> there will not be 20 guys this, this Saturday for sure because Elmer will not be there. If Elmer was there, it would be 21. So. So at any rate, uh, men's breakfast, 7.30 this coming Saturday, and uh, open to all guys. Come and order off the menu and little devotional time together. It's always well worth the time. And so that's what's happening this coming week. And I uh, just want to remind you that the semi-annual congregational meeting is scheduled for October 24th. And uh, those that are on the committees, they need to submit a report by October. October 6th, because we'd like to get the reports out one week ahead of the 24th. And so we need to have those reports in by the 6th. If they're not in by the 6th, don't cry. Don't come to Charlie crying and saying, I didn't get mine in. It's okay. It just won't be in the report. So you got to get it in by the 26th. It's Wednesday, October 6th. And uh, we will get that put together. Right, Charlie? Right. Okay. Any questions, you can talk to her about that. Choir practice will start the first Wednesday in October with, uh, with Bob Floss. And he'll be starting the Christmas songs that will be sung uh, for the Christmas concert that they will have in December. And so uh, if you need a little extra help with your voice, you can come Thursday at 9 o'clock. So uh, you notice I'm not in the choir because... I'd be coming on Thursday at nine o'clock. No. Anyway, that's all the announcements. There's others in your bulletin. You can read those for yourself. And let us just look to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we are grateful. We are thankful for everyone that is here today. Lord, just a little reminder for those that know Mark and um, Tammy Ebel that she is going to be put on the list for a liver transplant. We don't know where she's going to be on the list, but we just pray for Mark and for Tammy today. We know that she cannot be feeling well if this is the case that she's dealing with for some time. And so uh, Rochester uh, Mayo Clinic uh, is going to do the surgery when the time comes. So just also be with Peg and with Jim as uh, they are the mother-in-law and father-in-law to Tammy and mom and dad to Mark, that you would just uh, comfort them during this time and that we just put everything into your hands, into your hands, Lord. It's a good place to be is in your hands, no matter what takes place. Today, Lord, we put in your hands the worship service that's here today. We thank you for everyone that is here. Some that are here visiting, some that are here with family, and, and uh, we're grateful to see the friends of others and the relatives of others that come, and we just put into your hands every part of the service that will draw people closer to Jesus, that we will hear his name over and over, and that we know that he is the Savior that wants to be a Savior to each and every person here today. And so we give you thanks for all that you do for us, even as we live in a messed up world. 
Thank you for the peace that you give to us and the comfort. Through the thick and the thin, you are with us. In your name we pray. Amen. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silence the boast of sin and grace, the heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again, you have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. You have no rival, you have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. The song reminds me of a person a number of years ago. As he would come to church, he would put a, a slash every time the pastor would say the name Jesus. And after the church service, he said, 
Do you know that you said the name of Jesus 24 times today? I go, really? I didn't know that. And he goes, yeah. He goes, if you're going to look for a church, look for one that uses the name Jesus in it. Jesus Christ. Because he said there's a lot of churches that don't mention the name Jesus. They'll talk about God. And they'll have the things in their liturgy type of a thing. Liturgy? Yeah. About, but the pastor never mentions the name Jesus. And I, I just never thought of that before. So uh, if you didn't know what to do today, you can make little check marks and tell me afterwards how many times you heard the name Jesus this morning. A responsive reading today. The Love of Christ by John Bunyan. Here is love that God sent his son. His, his son that, that never offended. offended. His, his son, son that was always his delight. delight. Herein is love that he sent him to save sinners. To, to save, save them by bearing their, their sins, sins, by bearing their, their curse, by dying their death, and, and by carrying their, their sorrows. sorrows. Here is love. In that while we were yet enemies, Christ died for us. Yes, yes. here is love. In that, that while we were yet, yet without, without strength, strength, Christ died for the ungodly. I see you in the sunrise every morning. It's like a picture that you painted for me. A love letter in the sky. Story. I could have had a really different story. You came down from heaven to restore me, forever saved my life. Nobody loves me like you love me, Jesus. I stand in all of your amazing ways. I worship you as long as faithful and true. Nobody loves me like you. Mountains, you're breaking down the weight of all my mountains. Even when it feels like I'm surrounded, you never leave my side. Oh. I stand in all of your amazing ways. I worship you as long as I am breathing. God, you are faithful and true. Nobody loves me like you. Oh, what a song to sing 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 Jesus, you love me and I love you, God. Nobody loves me like you love me, Jesus. I stand in all of your amazing ways. I worship you as long as I am breathing. God, you are faithful and true. Nobody 
celebrated 11 years as a church of Harbor of Joy, and Jack Johnson said he wanted to say something on the day of the anniversary, but the fair was going on, and he's got cattle he's got to have showing down there, and he wanted to do it the, week, the Sunday after that, and he goes, Pastor, I can't do it that Sunday either because I'll still be down in Spencer at the fair, and so today he's here. And I told him, keep it short. He told me I could tell him the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, for those of you that were here 11 years ago, some of you have heard me say most of this before. But just gotta, have it on. Just gotta, I got to get it closer. All go. right, sorry. Uh, most of it you probably heard before, but anyway, 11 years ago, First Lutheran, th those of, the, of us that were members there had a vote to decide whether to let gays and lesbians or whatever it was be school teachers to our kids. And that vote was uh, they, the, the vote, the, the thing that really upset me most was they had communion that day, and it wasn't a normal communion Sunday, so that people that had communion could vote. Anyway, that was another added deal. Uh, but we were, were not, they didn't get the vote done until 11 30, 12 o'clock. So they kept us around there a long time. Lynn and I had to leave earlier than that because our grandkids were having a play in Ames and we had to be down there to watch that. We sure needed to be, so we went. I called Pastor Tim Nappy uh, in the middle of the afternoon and found out that the boat went how it did and uh, was a little upset, but it, was, it, it, it happened the way it did. Um, and then we went to the, to the play, and that evening, our daughter-in-law had her father come from central Minnesota. He had been on the, uh, his, he was the, the uh, representative from his church to the ELCA board. And and uh, he had been to that meeting and he came down and she wanted him to talk to the people at her congregation in Boone. And when he got there, he, he visited with us for, he visited us with us for, <laughs> I, I'm loud enough anyway, but he visited with us for, for probably an hour, to telling us how over the years, the ELCA had kept gradually bringing up the same thing over and over again until they finally got it to pass. And he said, basically, on top of that, uh, they were not really preaching out of the Bible anymore. And he used an example of a, of a uh, seminary student went in and visited with his instructor and uh, took his Bible in with him. And the guy took his Bible and threw it in the trash. He said, we don't use those anymore. So that's the kind of, and this all happened the same day, folks. The same day that we had that vote, we, that happened to Lynn and I. And it just solidified my belief that you got to have the Bible. And I was so thankful that Pastor Nappy started this church to give us a place to go.
Well, if you'll take out your National Geographic, no, take your Bible, invite you to stand as we hear the Word of God this morning, comes from Mark chapter 9, verses 38 through 50. Mark 9, 38 through 50. Teacher, said John, we saw a man driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said. No one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. I tell you the truth. Anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to Christ will certainly not lose his reward. And if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell, where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with each other. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word here today, even though it sounds a little strange and a little different for us today. But your word is your word. And... Um, I just pray, Lord, that the text that is here before us will uh, speak to us today as you want it to, as your Holy Spirit enlightens us and reveals to us what we need to hear. Not what we want to hear, but what we need to hear today. We pray in your precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Just want you to realize that uh, going through Mark, we're still in chapter 9, and there's a lot we've covered in chapter 9 of Mark. Remember last, last couple of weeks, we've been, well, actually just last Sunday, I think it was, that Jesus took a young boy and stood him in the midst of the disciples, and he had something he wanted to teach the disciples, which was, you know, if you welcome like this young little boy, uh, you are doing a, you're doing a good thing. You're welcoming me and you're welcoming the Father, which is even greater. And so Jesus really never really talks about himself, never brings attention to himself, but he always thinks of others as more important, even with a young child. And this little boy that he ended up picking up with his arms and uh, holding him, uh, he, he, taught to the, he taught his disciples of just saying, you know, you need to be more like a child. He, they're trusting. You know, I'm not talking about a spoiled child. I'm talking about a child who knows he's a child, not a child who's trying to, to be like an adult, because that just doesn't fit either. But let kids be kids. And you, there's a lot of things you can learn from. One of the things you learn about kids is they're very trusting, very honest. You know, the older you get, you struggle with that more, don't you? You kind of got to be PC here and PC there. And you got to watch what you say so you don't offend anybody here and there. But a child just says it like it is. If you ever listen to a, a, one of your grandkids pray, and if you don't have grandkids, if you just listen to a child pray, you see that they're very honest. And they speak the truth. 
They just tell it the way they see it. And that's very important for us as adults not to lose sight of that. We too must come to the Lord with truth and with honesty and uh, trusting him in all that we say to him as well. But we realize that in chapter 9, you go previous to this, remember there was a guy that came with a demon-possessed son, and he went to the disciples because he couldn't find Jesus and asked the disciples if they could help him out by getting this evil spirit out of his boy, and the disciples couldn't do it. Well, here, here we have John. Very rare do you ever hear John specifically talked about. But John is one of the disciples, and he says to Jesus, teacher or rabbi, we saw a man driving demons in your name, and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Whoop de do. He was not one of us. And so uh, Jesus gives his disciples a little advice. Good for us to hear too. He says, Whoever is not against us is for us. So he told them, Don't stop somebody who is doing something good, like casting out some evil demons. Let them do it. And if you're using my name, all the better. There is power in the name of Jesus. And uh, we find in Philippians chapter 2, verses 10 through 11, it talks about at the name of Jesus, what's going to happen? Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. There's something about the name of Jesus that's very powerful, very important. We will hear a lot of people talk about God, and everybody goes, yeah, 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 God, yeah, God, God. But you bring in Jesus' name, and it's like, don't say that name. You can say God, but don't say Jesus. And I say, lighten up. The name of Jesus is powerful. We need to bring his name up over and over and over again. We find in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it says, Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men, put in their women and children, by which we must be saved. The name of Jesus is so important when it comes even salvation. No other name will bring salvation other than the name of Jesus Christ. And that's why we want people to realize that they need a Savior, that they are sinful, they need forgiveness. Jesus is the one who paid the price on the cross and died for that sin, whatever it was that you have in your life. He paid the price for that. And then offers you in return eternal life. He'll forgive you, give you eternal life. Your garbage for his great blessings. Doesn't seem fair, but you only find that with Jesus. He'll take the worst and turn it into the good for us. There's something about the name of Jesus. We sang about that this morning as well, and I did not talk to Bob about this at all. It just, I go like, yeah, it fits in today's message. How the Lord works. Jesus goes on and he tells his disciples, anyone, anyone who gives a cup of water in my name because you belong to Christ will certainly not lose his reward. You know, a, a cup of water. It's small. It's little. But when God is in something small, it's big. And it's, it's enough. Little is enough when God is in it. I think there's even a song that's, that's titled that. So a little advice that Jesus gives to his disciples is, if you want to be great, be a servant of all, even children. They were the least. 
So that's his advice. Be a servant of all. Another little thing we find in our text today is, you know, the little ones. It says that anyone causing a child who believes in Jesus to sin, it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. Do you know what a millstone is? I think there's a millstone park not too far from here. If you looked at the millstone that is there or any millstone that you ever come across, it's kind of got a hole in the center of it. But just think of uh, tying a, a rope or through that donut there and around your neck and be cast into the, into the water, Lake Okoboji, what's going to happen? You're going to go down with that millstone. Jesus values children and their faith and what they believe, their trust. You know, because of Jesus, everybody's essential. There's no such thing in Jesus Christ that you are a non-essential person. You are essential to him in his eyes. You have great value to him, no matter who you are, because he died on the cross for you. And, you know, when it says the millstone around the neck and thrown into the sea, if you cause a child who believes in Jesus to sin, you know, it's not just adults, it's also including teenagers and just older kids. Because you can have somebody sin. You can make somebody sin with your influence and who you are. Sometimes we see that even on Wednesday night. Right, Gloria? You ain't seen nothing yet. But it's... It can, it can happen with other kids. We see it in schools. If you want to be a Christian and go to school and others find out about it, that that's what you believe, you can have a difficult time. You can be made fun of in class, in front of others. Even if you go to church, make, you're made fun of. Another little thing we find here in our text today is little sin. You know, Jesus talks about, you know, if your hand, cut it off, a foot, cut it off, an eye plucked out. I just want you to know that what Jesus says here, it's hyperbole. It is what we call it, like an exaggeration, but it's a, a way of using uh, words that gets the attention of people of the point that he wants to make. You know, if we took it literally, None of us here would have both eyes. Or we wouldn't have a foot. Some of us wouldn't have any feet. No hands. No eyes. <laughs> because we, we all sin. Don't we? If you say you don't sin, First John says you've deceived yourself. We all sin. And so Jesus just making the point here that, uh, you know, because of sin, there is this place called hell. Not talked about a whole lot in pulpits today. Uh, too bad that it's not, because the truth is that Jesus is the one who's speaking here, and he brings it up. He talks about hell. And so it's a literal place, and it's not a little place. We find that in the Sermon on the Mount, the, there's a road, right? Actually, there's two roads. There's the broad road that leads to destruction. It's the narrow road that leads to life. And it's like we're all on, we're on one of these two roads here today. You're either on the broad road or you're on the narrow road. Which road do you want to be? Hopefully, you want to be on the narrow road that you know is going to lead to life, eternal life. That's what Jesus would want you to be on. There is a place outside of Jerusalem that's called the Valley of Hinnom. And it was a place that for many, many centuries, it's used as a place where you 
It's a, like a landfill where you go out and you burn the garbage and you'd put dead animals in there. And in the Hebrew word, you got the word Gehenna that comes from the picture of the Valley of Hinnom. And Gehenna is the Hebrew word for hell, of what it is like. It is a place, and it is a place where there is fire. It's a garbage dump. It is where they put dead animals, so you know that if you've got dead animals, it's gonna, not going to take long. What are you going to find? Maggots. It's going to be worms. Any kind of a body. And even the prophet Isaiah talks about this place where it says in Isaiah 66, verse 24, it says, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. And Jesus talks about being thrown into this place. Now, it's not a place where you walk into. What's it like to be thrown into hell? What would that be like? A place where there is torment that never ends. It is a dark place. So as people say, well, I'm going to go there where all my friends are. Huh, you're mistaken. Hell is a dark place. You're there by yourself. You don't have friends. It is a fire. It is torment. It is something that will never end. Is that really something you're interested in? A place where you want to go? I was very afraid of hell as a young person. It's the last place I ever wanted to end up. And I just didn't really know how you don't go there until I heard the gospel. Jesus took your place. God is satisfied with you because of what Jesus did for you. He will forgive you of your sins. And I go like, well, then that's me. I have a lot of sin. I need forgiveness. And I don't want to go to hell. Now, some people say, well, you can't scare anybody and to, go to keep from going to hell. I go like, well, I'm one of those that I was afraid of it. I, got, I was scared of it. And there's nothing wrong with being scared of going to that place as long as you know the right way and how to get to heaven, which is through Jesus. There's a little song that uh, here in Sunday school, be careful little hands what you do. Be careful little mouth, lips, and tongue what you say. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful little hands, mouth, lips, tongue what you say and do. It goes on, it says, uh, be careful little feet where you go. Be careful little eyes what you see. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful little hands, little mouth, little lips, little tongue, feet, eyes, what you do and what you say and where you go and what you see. Jesus is making that statement here with his disciples. Sin will always lead you away from the truth. It'll take you further than you ever thought it, you'd want to go. The last little thing we see here in our text today, which goes along with your outline in, in your bulletin today, is that it, Jesus talks about little salt. There's little salt. Now, did you realize that salt is used in the sacrifices in the Old Testament, and salt symbolizes purity and to preserve? It's a preservative. Now, it, verse 49 says everyone will be salted with fire, and it kind of goes to, in in the commentaries that I was reading and studying this, it talks about that, you know, as a believer, there's going to be times when we are going to face suffering and trials, some difficult things. 
we will be tested. But Jesus says that salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, what's it going to become? It's going to be like sand, grit. If you would have that in some food, what would you do? Napkin, please. Or you'd spit it out. Nobody wants to taste grit or sands or little rocks in your food. Jesus says in Matthew 5.13, you are the salt of the earth. Salt is good. But not a lot of it. I had a craving for spam here, not this past couple of weeks ago. I didn't realize how salty spam is. I, 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 I could not really eat it without putting some eggs and bread and a little bit of meat in there. But spam is salty. Too much salt is not good. It's not good if you have high blood pressure. It's not good, uh, too much of anything is not good if it's too much. But I did, this is something new to me. There was a, a lady a number of years ago who was put in the hospital. I'm going like, well, what in the world's going on? She said, I'm low on salt. I go, what? <laughs> I never heard of that one before. You can be low on salt and it, it does something with your equilibrium that you get a little dizzy or you just get a little little like uh, like in La La Land. But salt, we know when Jesus says it is good, we look at salt, it is good for seasoning food. Salt will make you thirsty. Think of being thirsty for God's word. You want to hear it. It lowers the melting point of ice and snow. You put a little salt on it and it will melt. It'll make it a little rougher that you can actually walk on it rather than slipping and falling down. Salt is a preservative. They packed a lot of pork and salt way back in the day so that you could eat the meat in the wintertime. The salt would be a preservative. Salt can also be used to fight infections. Put a little salt on any kind of an infection. So it's kind of like an antiseptic in some ways. Jesus says that if you lose your saltiness, how can it be made salty again? And the answer to that is it can't. It can't. You're just going to end up with sand. Therefore, it'll be thrown out. It'll be trampled on by feet. And Jesus wants us to be salty. You're the salt of the earth, but not too much. But God wants to use you in the lives of other people. That they will become curious. That they would kind of want to know, what is it about you that makes you different from them? Why do you enjoy life or you have a hope in life and I don't have that? Where do you get your, your joy? The disciples, if you remember, they were arguing about who was the greatest previous to this text. And at that time, they were really not interested in humility, being last, and being a servant to all. Does this sound like you? Humility? You like being humble? None of us like being humble. We like being number one. Serve me. You do it because I said you do it this way. Being last. I don't want I don't like being last in line. I like being up front. The best food is your first in line. It comes to a potluck. 
or to go to some place you don't want to stand in a line a long ways, you'd like to be up in front. You go to Walmart, you like standing in a line? No, you'd like to be up there getting checked out right away. Servant to all. Like serving? Or would you rather be served? Hmm. Well, Pastor, you're stepping on my toes too much here today. Well, I'm just saying what Jesus says. If you think this message is tough, wait till next Sunday. I looked at chapter 10. It's about divorce. And I'm going like, I don't think I want to talk on that. I want to skip that. I'm not going to. So I'm just giving you a heads up. Say a little, I won't, I won't be all exhaustive, that's for sure, but I'll just like I'll talk a little bit of what it says here in the scripture about divorce. And I know some of you have gone through it. And uh, it's not going to be an easy subject. But if you're going to get madder than a wet hand, then probably don't come next Sunday. Just give you a heads up. The benediction today comes from 1 Peter. Chapter 5, verse 10 and 11. It says this. And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, we talked about some things today that aren't easy to admit to. We uh, heard that you are teaching your disciples what, what just a little sin can do. And it's never, ever good. And we should never, ever be accepting and enjoying sin. Because it's not who you are, Lord. You are perfect. You are holy. There is no sin in you. You're you're a God of love. You're a God of light. And sin is darkness. And it goes against every fiber of who you are. And so, Lord, bring us into the light here today. Bring us into the beams of love that flows from you that is directed towards us that we would just admit who we are and how we need your mercy and your grace. And we need you in our lives each and every day, not just for Sunday, but for every day of the week. And may we stay close to you, not because we have to, because we want to. We want to serve you, not because we have to, because we want to. It makes a big difference. And only your gospel can change our attitude and change our hearts from, I don't want to, to, yeah, I will do that. With the Lord's help, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So thank you for meeting us and speaking to us today, even if it's something we didn't like to hear. And we take issue with. But Jesus, you are God. And you are true, and you never lie to us. Help us to be like you. 
Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us stand as we recite the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. You shall go out with joy. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Sorry, but you're going to stand up when you sing this one. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy, and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you. There'll be shouts of joy and all the people in the field will clap, will clap their hands. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. The trees of the field will clap their hands. As we go out with joy, go in peace and serve the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> 